Good day folks, my name is Sean and this is Air Photography. In today's video I'm going to show you how you can take HDR photos with your DJI Mini 2. The DJI Mini 2 by default is not capable of taking HDR photos, but by using bracketed photos, stacking and merging them together in HDR software, you can end up with some really nice HDR photos. In fact, sometimes it's even better than the processed ones because you have a lot more control. By taking bracketed photos and stacking them, you can end up with photos like this, compared to a regular photo like this. So in this video I'm going to show you two ways in which you can capture bracketed photos on your DJI Mini 2 and how to merge them together in HDR software such as Photomatix. So let's just jump right in and take a closer look. So today we're going to be talking about the DJI Mini and how to capture bracketed photos. But we're also going to be taking a look at the Mavic Air 2 because you can do the same thing with it. If you got one of these drones over the holiday season and you want to learn how to do this, this technique works for both. Now the Mavic Air 2 already has a built-in option for taking HDR photos. But if you want a little bit more control over your HDR photos, then taking bracketed photos is a good option for you as well. Now before we get too far into things here, I'm going to show you a couple examples. One of the problems with a drone like the DJI Mini 2 is that it has a very small sensor. And what happens is with a small sensor, the drones don't have very good dynamic range. So what happens then if a camera doesn't have great dynamic range, it's really hard to expose properly for both highlights and lowlights. So I'm going to use this image here as an example. You can see this is a photo of a sunrise. The sky is really bright, there's a lot of color in it, but what happens is the camera has a hard time exposing properly for both. And in a situation like this, it doesn't do either very well. So in a situation like this, you have a couple options. You can adjust the exposure. You can either go up a few stops or go down a few stops with your EV compensation. So if we go to the next photo here you can see that we've changed the exposure and the sky is much better exposed. We have more color, we can see more definition in the clouds, but as you can see the ground is really dark. There's no detail there anymore. It looks okay with the color but really it'd be nice to have everything properly exposed. So if we go to the next photo here you can see I've got the ground a little bit more exposure. You can see more detail in it but now the sky is all blown out. We've lost all the color and we've lost a lot of the definition in the cloud. But now in this next image here, you can see it looks fantastic. We've got a lot of definition in the ground. You can see it, lots of color. The sky is properly exposed. We've got lots of color in the sky, lots of definition in the cloud. And we achieve this by taking those three different exposures, stacking them and merging them into an HDR photo. And then of course we applied a little bit of a color grade over top just to help the colors pop. So that's basically all that HDR photography is. It's taking three different photos, one that's properly normally exposed. We then go two stops up for an overexposed photo two stops down for an underexposed photo. When they're all merged together, you get a lot of detail in all areas of the photo. And this is something you're probably familiar with because phones have been doing it for a long time. The difference is on something like an iPhone, when you take an HDR photo, it's all done in the background for you. The phone will fire off three photos really quickly, one overexposed, one underexposed, and a normal one, and leave you with one photograph that's properly exposed throughout the whole image. And that's what happens on the Mavic Air 2 as well when you take an HDR photo. Again, the drone will take three photos very quickly, and within the software, for it, it will merge them all together and present you with a nicely exposed photo. The problem with doing HDR photos that way is that you're a little bit limited to what you can do. So let's take a look at the DJI Fly app here and I'll show you two different ways in which you can take your bracketed photos. One of the new features of the DJI Mini 2 when it was launched is that it does give us the option to automatically take bracketed photos. We can't take an HDR photo, but we can take the three different exposures needed to create an HDR photo. And that's what that AAB option is under photos. You can see there when we select it, and then we take a photo. You can hear there that it took three separate photos. You can see here when we go to the preview, we have that one photo we just took and it says AEB. So that means it has three photos stored. If we actually go in and check the memory card, there's going to be three individual photos. Again, one normally exposed, one overexposed, and one underexposed. So that's definitely the easiest way to do it. Doing it that way has some pros and cons. First of all, it's instant, so you don't have to worry about the drone drifting around. The thing with HDR photos is you want the camera to be absolutely still. When you're doing it manually, you know, the drone can kind of move around a little bit, and then the images aren't going to line up 100% correctly. So doing it that way, it just fires them off really quickly, and you don't have to worry about the drone moving around. The other way to do it is manually, and uh, it's kind of nice sometimes doing it manually because you can actually set the exposure to what you want. So for example here, if we're going to take a bracketed set manually, we're just going to put it over into the regular photo mode in the single shot. And you want to make sure your EV compensation is at zero. That's kind of evenly exposed. And then you're just going to take a photo. Once that's done, you're going to adjust the EV compensation. We're going to go at least two steps up 
to plus two. But depending on the situation, you just have to kind of eye it up. Sometimes it's advantageous to go up even higher. You can go all the way up to three. And as you can see, that's very overexposed. Now what that's going to do is allow for a lot of detail to show up in the dark areas. So what we'll do then is we'll just take a photo when it's overexposed like that. And then we've got to take an underexposed one. So again, we're going to go two stops down. Just like that there. And again, you can go even higher. You can go all the way up to three stops down. The lower you go, especially if you're doing something like a sunrise or sunset, there's going to be more color in the sky. And again, then we just take our photo. So now if we go to the gallery, that first one is the AEB one we took, but now we have three photos. We have a normally exposed one, we have an overexposed one, and we have an underexposed one. And those are the three photos we need to merge them into an HDR image. So now at this point, we're going to head over to the laptop and I'm going to show you how to merge your HDR photos. So I'm just doing a screen recording on my laptop here. And here I have software called Photomatics and it's by HDR Soft. You can do it in Lightroom. If you have an iPad and you have something like Affinity Photo, you can do it in there as well. Photomatics is what I use most of the time when merging HDR photos. It's just really intuitive. It's easy to do. You don't have to have any kind of editing skills or you know knowledge when it comes to color grading and that. They have some really good pre-made filters in there that can really make your HDR photos pop. So the first thing we're going to do is hit browse and load. So I'm going to select our three bracketed photos here. We have our regular exposed photo, underexposed, and overexposed. We'll hit open. So here they are listed here. So we're going to go to the next option and we get to choose our merge options. Now one thing you do have to keep in mind with HDR photos is a lot of noise can be introduced to the photo. So you know sometimes you have to be careful of that. But as you can see here it does give us an option to reduce noise. So always make sure you put that check mark in there. And for me, I have it set to normal exposed and underexposed. So those are the two photos that it's going to reduce the noise on. And if you have to, you can adjust the strength. If you find that it's still a lot of noise in your image, you can adjust the strength to help get rid of that. You can see here we have alignment settings. And this option up here where it says on tripod, usually most of the time that's what you're going to leave it in. You're, you'll only change that, say the drone was blowing around a lot and the images aren't lining up. Then you might want to put handheld with minimal movement. But for the most part, just leave it on tripod and that should align it properly. So we've got everything set the way we want. So now what we're going to do is hit align and merge. And it's going to basically take those three photos, stack them together and merge them into one photo that's properly exposed. It only takes a few seconds and then it'll pop it up here in a second. And there we go there. So that's taken those three images. And now we've got an image that is properly exposed both in the sky and everything looks good. And from here we can do a lot of different things to it. You can see over here on the side we have all different, um, I guess, uh, filters. Some of them are pretty extreme. And, uh, you know, they look a little overdone. HDR even works good for black and white. You don't have to have a lot of color in it. Basically, HDR just makes everything properly exposed. So if you want to have black and white, you can do that as well. I've got a couple pre-made ones here that I tend to use with my drone shots. I have a cool temperature one and a warm temperature. Over here on the left-hand side, we can go in and adjust things further. If we find the saturation is a little too much. Personally, myself, I like a photo that's a little oversaturated. I know that's kind of a personal preference. Some people don't like that. But if you find it is a little too oversaturated, you can turn the saturation down. Or if you're like me, you can bump it up even higher. We can adjust the temperature further if we want a warmer image, cooler image. You know, so at this point, it's just all about personal preference. Or you don't have to do anything. If you're happy with the way the filter worked, then uh, you can just go ahead and export it. Once you're happy with it, you can just hit finish. And at this point, you can go ahead and save it. But it does give you a few more options here that you can adjust. For example, contrast, we can set uh, very mild contrast. You can see it just kind of up the contrast there. Or we can go to medium contrast and then adjust it. You've got a little curve uh, editing tool there. Uh, we can sharpen it. Maybe do some mild sharpening. And you can go in and even crop it if you want to uh, adjust the size. If you've got a tilted horizon, you can go over there and then straighten it. Once you're done there, you just hit save final image. So here's another photo here we've just converted to HDR. This one's actually pretty dramatic. It's the one I showed you at the beginning of this video. If we switch over to show original, you can see just what a difference it makes. You know, this was early in the morning, so, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of light yet, but uh, once we convert it and stack the photos, then uh, you can see just what a difference there is. And again, this may be a little oversaturated for some, so you can go ahead and uh, adjust it. This one here is called natural but edgy. You know, it still looks good. Everything's exposed properly. Got some other ones over here, some built-in ones. 
This one's called Painterly. That one looks pretty good too. This one is a little much for me. You can see it does give you a lot of texture in the sky, but uh, it's pretty vibrant. So at this point, it's just totally up to you on how you like your photos to look. But it is a great tool, and if you want to get into more drone photography, but you don't have a lot of experience, a lot of skills when it comes to editing and color grading, So yeah, folks, just a quick introduction to how you can capture HDR photos on your DJI Mini 2. Now, so as mentioned, if you do fly the Mavic Air 2, you could still follow along because it works exactly the same way. Now, with the Mavic Air 2, you do actually have a few extra benefits. First of all, it does have a half-inch sensor, so your dynamic range is going to be even better right just from the start. And when you're taking your AB bracketed photos, it does give you the option to take five automatically. Well, folks, hopefully you found this video informative. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.